team Greek search of the Italian models with our uh, book club. Uh, and so this is uh, one of uh, the interesting chapters, which is um, uh, basically expanding uh, our knowledge about scanning through um, hyperparameters to set the best uh, combination. And so this practice is called grid search. So we basically uh, scan through uh, setting uh, our, our, para our parameters to find the best combination, okay? Uh, what we, uh, the learning objective uh, are uh, learn how to use um, uh, new um, uh, packages within the tidy model uh, meta package such as deals uh, and its functions. Uh, one is, we, we mentioned this a bit in the previous um, weeks, but now we are uh, like, like to show um, uh, how it works on a case study, okay, on a particular case study. So we, we use this function parameters to, to set the parameters. We use this function grid regular for, um, uh, you can imagine uh, a grid, which is like a panel with fill of dots, okay? So all these dots uh, are possible outcomes. Uh, and so we like to build uh, uh, such as uh, a fill uh, of possible outcomes uh, as a uh, background structure of our model, and then refit the model again on this uh, possible uh, level of this of the of our other parameters to find the best ones. Okay, so and there are two uh, ways because we are going to learn about regular grids and non-regular grids. Uh, in fact, we can use grid random. For example, so to, to create a uh, non regular grid or irregular grids. And then we finally search uh, with the, within the grid. Uh, and so we tune uh, these two, as I said, uh, to the best parameter with the, uh, this function from the tune package, which is called tune grid. And then we can select the best parameters, uh, again, from the tune package with the select the best, okay, select the best. And then uh, basically what uh, we are going to finally uh, check is the, uh, okay, there is a mention about parallel processing because all this procedure of searching within grids, it's time consuming and it's computational and expensive. So we do a little mention about parallel processing, and then we finally uh, define QRACE uh, um, ANOVA, which is like a sort of uh, competitor of TuneGrid. So you can do, uh, we will see this when we do many models uh, package, um, because that, there is a specific case study where they run both of them. Uh, but uh, it's it's basically um, a competitor, uh, and uh, you might want to choose between the two, uh, and some somehow uh, can be more efficient uh, or not. Okay, so these are the pre the notes made from by previous courses, and there is a specific case study on Chicago um, transport. Uh, what we do, it's basically use the, the, the data from the book. So we go back to, uh, can you just confirm that you can see my R? Yes, I can see your R. Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. So basically, uh, so uh, we set, uh, we use the, we need these packages, okay? Obviously, tidy models and tidy models prefer. 
we obviously need tidyverse. We don't need lovely date because it's now included within the tidyverse. And we have this this packages that we mentioned later. Okay, so I do this state forward. So setting the parallel processing. Uh, you, it's a good practice to uh, somehow uh, load it just right be, before you run the, 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 the chunk of uh, code, which is computationally expensive. But you can even call it earlier, okay? In this case, we use this package, do parallel, uh, which uh, comes with a couple of, uh, this is because I use a Mac, Macintosh. So if you use Windows, you need to follow the other procedure. But if in case you uh, are on a Mac, uh, you can safely use do parallel. And then as you can see, there are two uh, options. You, uh, you don't uh, need to do anything else that uh, select the, re the register do parallel. Okay. And so uh, basically the, the maximum number of cores in your computer are activated. So when you run something which is computationally expensive, uh, it does uh, a little faster. Okay. So we use this, uh, this data which is uh, from uh, a package uh, uh, and I'll show you uh, what I mean. This, this uh, data is from model data package and it, it's about cell body segmentation. Uh, as we can uh, have a quick look uh, at this uh, data because the, the, pre the procedure here is to uh, not use the case. Uh, let's have a look at the data. So as you can see, we have a class variable that specify the type of cells. Uh, and then we have, because the cells can be of different sizes, so we have the angles, the area, the average of um, internal. Uh, so I'm not. I'm, I'm not I don't want to see. So we have different, uh, uh, basically, specification of cells. Okay, within um, uh, uh, this data set that has been um, developed. Uh, to predict which cells in a high content screen were well segmented, okay? We have 119 imaging measurements taken in, on 2019. And the original analysis was used for training uh, and testing. So as a training and test to uh, check out this, uh, the size of these cells, okay? So what we are going to do, what's best to use for practicing a grid search? Okay, this is a very good uh, choice. Um, and um, more importantly is to mention this class uh, variable, which is, as, which is provided with two levels, PS, poorly, poorly segmented, and WS, which is well segmented, okay? Let's go step by step and we're looking at uh, this. So here we have some, uh, as, as we can uh, see, information about the size. Okay, yeah, so they are all numbers. Okay, uh, entropies, uh, uh, sphere areas, volume, uh, length of the fibers. Uh, and so if we uh, even have a, a quick uh, look at the uh, cells uh, and we have a glimpse, uh, we can see that they are all numbers. Okay, they all doubles. So uh, there is integers, 
somehow, but the one that is a factor in particular, so a character factor, is the class variable. Okay, so which is um, for now we uh, don't use it. Okay, because what we would like we want to do is basically predict this by this. Uh, um, the, the, if if the cells are purely or well segmented, but we need to check for uh, correlations and many things because the other uh, elements within the data set are fairly correlated with each other. Okay, so first things is to take this out and then apply the V4 CV cells uh, on the data set to create uh folds so we don't split it okay we don't split it we just uh for now create um uh folds and then we uh start making um a recipe in this case uh, we use transformation and that's uh if you add a look at the data it's something that you might think I need to do uh, like um, scale and centering or at least a transformation of this data because they have different units. They are of different units, okay? So you apply, you can you apply this step Yale Johnson uh, and this is on all numeric predictors, then you normalize and then you PCA. And then you normalize again. Uh, we can, uh, if we run this, uh, this thing. Okay. And uh, why we do PCA, it's because there's many predictors. We haven't had uh, a look at the cells uh, dimension, but we have 57 predictors, which are quite a number. So as we are conducting, so our formula includes all the predictors, we have a multidimensional environment, which is too much, okay? So we need to apply the principal component to reduce the the number of components to uh, passing through selecting just those ones with uh, the highest bias. So those ones that we want to have a look at. Okay, those are the more influencing uh, the information. Yeah. Or if any. Okay. Okay, so I just want to ask like in line 47, you are using the V-fold uh, cross-validation. Is there any idea why is it that we did not split the data like into training and testing? Because there's not many data. Uh, if we look at the dimension, so we, we have 2000 uh, and uh, we like, uh, they are almost, uh, very well correlated within each other. And the be best way is would be to shuffle them a bit, okay? Have a different combination of them because so then you can lose information. But you can even want to, you so in other, under other condition, you might want to split them, okay? But this is not, because of the number of predictors, the number of observation is low. It, there is a, a, a procedure to uh, consider the proportion between the number of predictors and the number of observation. Let's say that if I do 57 divided by um, um, so let, let's say if I do 57 divided by 2019, okay, this is uh, um, about 2%. So it's a, it's a very 
um, how can I say? So you need uh, many predict, many observation um, to when you have many predictors, basically. Okay, so these are not uh, uh, that many in this case. Okay, let, let's. Uh, mm, the, this is uh, you find this uh, in uh, introduction statistical learning. Uh, there is a specification of uh, this fifty seven is p, which is the number of predictors. So when you there is a chapter about like looking at those things uh, uh, for selecting the uh, the best way for select uh, the number of predictors and um, and so those things. And there is a specification for the proportion within those two. And that, that must uh, has to be of a certain level because otherwise uh, you might lose information. Okay, so the, the model that, that uh, okay, so this is mainly the reason, but you might want to, if you just make a selection uh, and you do a, recipe, a formula with two, like the volume and the length, let's say of the cell, and so you have two predictors that you might want to split your data. Okay, did I answer your question? Yes, 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 thank you. Okay, right. So let's have a look at this, uh, this step that we did it. That, this, is, this is fine. Okay, so we have our uh, recipe and if we do prep and then bake and then new data null. Okay, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, I don't, I, I don't know why I do these things. Do you know what I need to put the, here? New, no? Is that a new that I need to put? To have a look at this thing. Prep and bake, new data. I think I'm less familiar with the prep and bake workflow. So uh, I'm, I'm afraid I can't help on this one. Oh, so, uh, it says you can. Uh, yes. For sure. What about the juice? I think there is also a juice. Okay. It says in the error that you can't prep a tunable re recipe. Maybe you need the, like the tune grid. That's what it says in the error message. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, you're right. You have to the uh, that that was the reason because you know. Okay, so I forgot to mention that when we did uh, this uh, uh, PCA, we stayed put this uh, uh, on the number of components. Uh, we like to tune. The number of components. I completely forgot to mention this. Okay, so basically, if we uh, because I, I wanted to have a look at these things. Okay, if instead of tuning, okay, let's put it here. Uh, I put like five components and then run this thing. Okay, so I take the recipe. And then I do prep and then bake. Okay. So finally, we can see our, uh, the, what is the information. Okay. So these are, we are not tuning the number of components now. Okay, because we set it to, to five. We might need just the first two. In fact, if we use this, okay.
okay if you uh, if we use this uh, just to have a look uh, add the data okay uh where is it So we have uh, uh, the PC1 and the PC2. And then we have the geo point. Okay, we might want to group it by class. And color by yeah, I do that. I can do, I can even put them on a, on a pivot longer uh, and do the facet uh, of the other part. Okay, so now we can see that this is uh, the data that we are going to use uh, in our model. So we have two dimensions. Okay, let's imagine. Instead of having, we, we are going to tune the number of components, but why is, okay. okay. So we can see that, okay, what, what do you, what do you see? What do you see? These cells, the well segmented are almost on the right side, okay? So uh, while the poor segmented are on the bottom left side, so that there is a, a, a certain uh, split, okay, subdivision within the two groups. Okay, this is basically, yeah. Um, I just wanted to make sure I understand correctly. This is uh, before, the, uh, it, this is only like pre-processing, right? This is like the PC1, PC2. These are the uh, principal components, uh, one and two from five principal components. And this is just only um, feature engineering, pre-processing without any modeling or model fitting or whatever, right? Exactly. Because okay. this, is a, this is a very important part because we had 57 uh, predictors and we like to have all of them. This way, we have reduced the number of predictors to just a few. In this case, we are looking at just the first two components, which uh, contains the, the highest values of variability within the information. So we are now re reducing the, 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 uh, the problem, okay? Um, and so we use this data. Uh, we run this again because we like to have a look at what is the best number of components that uh, explains the, 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 the biggest part okay, the, of the variability. And then um, we start specifying a model. In this case, we use a neural network. This is uh, uh, something that we mentioned this multi-level perception, this ML, uh, I don't know if you know about that, okay? So this model here, multi-level perception, um, uh, type of model, this model, uh, it is a, a one layer neural network type of model, artificial intelligence uh, one with one layer. That, that means that we uh, have two models, okay? So one is underneath working on parameters and one is uh, up front which is our model, and it could be linear regression, whatever it is, okay? So a simple one, but un underneath as another model, which works on the level of parameters, okay? And assess itself, tuning, okay? So this is basically the idea. 
And so this multi-level perception model has a, uh, uh, so uh, as some, uh, you know, as uh, any other, so as a new, it's, it is a neural network, okay? So, um, allows for some uh, specification and particular parameters, okay? We have these hidden units, uh, D penalty, the epochs, okay? So these are the parameters that we are going to tune. This is part of the grid search, okay? If you understand, if we understand this, this, this uh, part, basically, uh, all the possible outcomes of these other parameters gets into the meaning of the grid search. Okay, the grid is a, a panel with all possible values of our uh, other parameters, and then start uh, searching for the best one with uh, the, the lowest uh, error. Always the same thing, okay? Um, and so the uh, hidden units, uh, we tune them. The penalty, we tune them, and the epochs. Okay, let's have a look if we want to specify a bit more about these things. Okay, so the hidden units, it's an integer and it's the number of units in the model. Okay, so this is neural network. Again, um, penalties, it's a non-negative numeric value for the amount of weight decay. So any time that it runs, um, uh, put something away. Okay for some reason. And then we have the uh, other, the, the dropout, okay? The epochs, which is an integer for the number of training iterations. It's a sort of like uh, cross validation, let's say. It repeats the things a certain number of time and each time changes the result changes. So you might want to, it, it's not said that an high level of epox will release best result. It's not said that a lower level of epox, it depends by the type of model. So you, when you run it, you have a look uh, and then decide. Yeah, if you want to jump in, just uh, add things. Uh, um, for, for me, I'm not that familiar with uh, neural networks. I think uh, this book is, uh, is my first uh, professional encounter, not uh, just, you know, like popular um, science encounter. So, uh, okay. so I guess I don't have a lot to add on this context. Okay. I suggest but thank you. It's very interesting yeah. and instructive. Yeah, I suggest you to have a look at a couple of uh, resources. One is, again, uh, introduction to statistical learning. There is a chapter, deep learning, which mentioned those things. And you have the formula to understand which, is, which are the, the parts that I just mentioned, such as what, is the, what are the hidden units. Okay. So I just given this for granted. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. But anyway, so this is the one layer neural network type of model that we like to use. The engine is again neural network, and this is trace one. Um, there is a little mention in the uh, notes uh, of the previous course about uh, this trace one, and it says the argument trace, uh, trace zero prevent extra logging of the training process. Not, not, not familiar with that too much. So just taking as is. And then the model, the mode uh, is classification as because 
you know, we have a factors with two levels and a space. So running this model specification, having done that, we can use this function, extract parameter set deals that we, we did at last time, okay? So if we use this, uh, this function, we can see that we have uh, all the parameters set to be, uh, okay, tuned. Uh, and so we don't need to uh, do more. This is, uh, okay, so tidy model syntax. We use the workflow on the model and on the recipe. This is our workflow. Okay. All uh, specify single layer neural network, uh, classification, etc. So now, what's happened here is that we extract the parameters from the workflow and then we update them, setting a specific number of epochs that range from 50 to 2000, 200 and then the number of components from zero to 40. Okay, Let, let's assume that we did some uh, research on the data uh, and everything, and uh, we realized that we want to this to range within these values, okay? So we can update the values this way. And then, uh, set the matrix. Yes, if I set the matrix, then I can use them inside my grid search. Okay, so basically what I want, what I found difficult the first time I learned these things is, okay, this is my workflow. Okay. Uh, I can understand that I have tuned the parameters in my models and in my recipe, okay? Not bombing, just flying away, okay? And um, uh, so I, I extract the parameters and update them, set the matrix, and then now I tune this this tune grid function is instead of fit, okay? Instead of using fit, we use tune grid. So first time I learned these things, I had a bit of like, why I'm not fitting, okay? Uh, but instead I use tune grid function. So you mean like instead of fit for, it's like, instead of fit for the hyperparameters, right? It's the the equivalence of fit for like, if fitting is for the uh, the predictor estimates, then the tune grid is fitting the hyperparameters, right? Right. Okay, perfect. Okay, you see, computes a set of performance metrics, accuracy, RMC, for a predefined set of tuning parameters that correspond to model or a recipe, recipe across one or more resamples of the data. But it doesn't, you basically, when you run this, um, this function, as is shown here, okay, this is our workflow. I need to specify the seed because it, it is random, okay. I don't run, run this, this takes a long time. Um, so this is the parameters, which is this one here. These are the collection of the, the parameters, okay? Inside the grid, I specify the poles, so this is cross-validation, the grid, in the grid, okay, this, this is what changes, okay? This is uh, 
I use a regular grid. This is the case for a regular grid. Instead, I can just specify a grid of 10, 15, okay? And it's basically searching within the things. And then I specify the method. If I run this, what I find, it's basically the result of a tune on 10 fold cross validation. And here are each fold with a table with the matrix. If I use this and I'll say, for example, unnest uh, the matrix, Okay, takes a bit. Maybe it's good if I just select a filter, a fold. Okay, now start. I think it's a good example for the, the uh, dangers of uh, computing power um, abuse using uh, the tune grid, uh, which they uh, um, they refer to in the chapter. Yeah, uh, basically, I'm I'm doing this way because um, uh, I think it's um, now now it's stuck. I like this to stop. But uh, um, basically, um, here we see okay. okay, okay, if I filter ID equals to bold. Zero one. I have just one fold, and then I unnest the matrix. Okay. So. Okay. So I have the hidden units, which vary, the penalty, and the number of epochs. We have the estimate for fold one. These are the estimates. Uh, and these are the various uh, uh, one to 10 model, different type of models applied to just one fold. So, okay. Yeah. Yeah, and each model has different type of parameters, right? Yeah. Okay. This is one model. Yeah. We have more than one model just in one fold. And we have a certain number of folds. Yeah, of course. But uh, but the, the difference between the models for each fold, for example, for the first fold is because of uh, the different hyperparameters, uh, the, uh, the epochs and the penalty and the hidden units, right? Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's have a look at um, visu visually what's happened. Okay, so these are um, different type of, uh, we have the, uh, we, for epochs, 50, 125, 200. So, we had the epochs ranging from 50 and 200. We have the value of the area under the curve, which you know that has to be close to one. And um, these are the number of hidden units. So as I said, neural network has this parameter, 
hidden units, which is basically a sort of coefficient. Okay, so you have a, a, a normal demodded function, okay, which is uh, like y equals to beta zero plus uh, uh, beta one x plus, okay, plus epsilon, which is the, uh, the error, okay? So a uh, neural network has within each beta a, a model inside, okay? Inside a beta, there is another model. There is another y equals to beta zero plus beta, okay? Which search for the uh, model of the coefficient. Okay, for the best uh, coefficient composition passing through another model. So that, that's the model which is underneath the thing. Okay, so, and these have a certain number of units that you can specify. Okay, and then you might have more layers. Okay, let's just focus on one layer. So, um, and uh, this is the uh, amount of regularization, which is yellow, green, and purple. Uh, and so for, for each level of regularization, we have uh, uh, this purple, uh, which is one, um, a regularization for one, which is about above all the others in terms of area under the curve. So this looks as three, uh, for, even for any uh, number of hidden units, the best, the best way for uh, even vary the epochs. So if you set the regulariza regularization to one, okay. So where did we put the regularization? Uh, where is the regularization? The amount of regularization, okay. I think so, it's called a penalty, no? Uh, all right, yeah. Okay, so let's show best. Uh, this is the best within all our uh, folds. Okay, this is model eight, model nine. This fold that has been chosen as to be the best. If I use show best and apply to my model, because this is a This one here with the grid, with the tune grid function. Okay. With all the folds. And I do, I take this and I do select best. Okay. He found one model. Specifically, for um, one model specifically, okay. While here, organization uh, tune. Didn't I do the same? Black best. Uh, show best. Okay. <laughs> okay. So show best. Okay. So show best. Show the best models. Okay. Why if I do select best. Uh, I can identify exactly which one is the best. Yeah. 
Okay. So, and then select the estimator. So I have all the, the specification. Now, what's happen if I, instead of uh, doing the grid as I did it before with the regular grid, I just specify a number, 20. Instead of doing uh, here, the parameters and grid regular and the level, I specify just uh, a grid of 20. Okay, if I run this, I have a different values, a show best, and this is uh, basically what is the... So this is a, a random grid search, right? This is the random grid. Yeah, okay. And so this is again the same. As you can see, uh, 5150, uh, and the other one is 5150. So even if I do uh, grid regular or I set a specific uh, number for the grid, I might uh, find the same result. Okay, so you can even scan a grid and set a number, which is computationally feasible, feasible uh, more than setting a grid search uh, function using it. But you need to like look at, in the chapter is specified, it's how to uh, show you create, uh, So this is the chapter, okay? So at the very beginning of the chapter, they show you, for example, uh, using crossing, uh, or grid regular, this is the function, okay? You can use crossing or grid regular. If you just have a look at the, uh, this function this way, you can find, uh, a grid that you might want to use. Okay, you can set it to eight, for example. So you can run this, find the number, and then put that uh, instead of using the function. Okay. Okay, let, let's go forward. So now what's happened is that we um, set the parameters on a table. Okay, we have this uh, number of components, the penalty. So we decide for these values, which are the best, 125 and so on and so forth even if I are different from, from this one here, eh? okay? So I set a new parameter. And then I finalize the workflow. I take back the workflow, finalize the workflow on these values. And this is another way to do the things, for example. And then finally, I can fit uh, on, this, on this value here, okay? So this is, um, if we go back to, so basically it's what I wanted to, to share with you, my understanding. Can you see the, the chapter? Uh, yeah, now we see the notes. And Oluwa Femi has a question. Yeah, Oluwa Femi. Yes, uh, thank you very much. I think this chapter is very, uh, very interesting because there are, there are lots for one to learn. So like 
though the example in which uh, you were showing with the neural network, it was a classification problem that we were trying to address. So what about if you have regression problems, we will still follow through the same step to do our grid search. So um, maybe I say, for example, we have done the grid search, we have gotten that hyperparameter. Am I going to apply that, those same parameter to fit uh, the model I'm trying to build? Yeah, uh, can, can you see the, the chapter? Yes, yes. Okay, this is a, uh, another case study. Okay, they use this uh, um, MS data, okay, uh, to predict sales price of the outfits. Uh, and so this is, uh, uh, we, we use this data previously, okay. So this is another example. So, the, so they make a recipe uh, and then the, um, the model in this case is a, a next G boost. Okay, so it's a basically a boost tree where you tune the parameters for this specific type of model, such as the trees, the minimum N and, and so on and so forth. In this case, you have a regression. Okay, and uh, you have a workflow, uh, and as well, you do the tune grid. Okay, in this case, uh, it is uh, uh, the type of uh, model, so you can. Uh, uh, I guess so that. You, yeah. I guess that in regression uh, type of models, then just the difference is on what uh, a kind of estimator um, does the tuning per hyper, per like the, the hyper parameters are tuned for. If on classification models, we use the area under the ROC curve, then here it would be for the R square or the root mean square error. But yes. besides that, I think it's just the, the exact same process. Yeah. Here they use uh, uh, in the tune grid function instead in the oops instead of uh, instead of the a number for a grid or the grid search, you can keep searching until at, uh, the number of. Uh, candidate points, for example. So you might want to have a look at the function to grid and the documentation and all the things, because there's many ways to, to use it. Um, okay, so I think we, we, we done, um, as I said, uh, I mentioned almost everything. Uh, which is uh, important to understand the, the topic. Uh, but there will be another chapter, which is screening many models, which actually compares the uh, tune grid, the grid search with the raising ANOVA, with the raising. So that, that is very interesting because it basically explains that at that point you then uh, understand what's happening and the difference between the two. But uh, I think it's um, more or less uh, everything that was, uh, these are other cases that you can, when you can apply uh, a grid search, you can apply grid search to any model that has tunable parameters, basically. On, on, uh, on a final note, I just wanted to add that uh, the final part that you showed about the Ames data set and the boosted tree uh, model. Uh, what was new for me was this uh, use models uh, package where you just um, like add like the formula and the type of model and data and just spits out the code to to create a model recipe and specification and workflow ah, yeah. and tuning. That's, yes. for me, it was mind blowing. That's amazing. It's like chat GPT style, but inside 
like tidy mouth. So it, like it's um, it's amazing. I had no idea about it, and it's like wow. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is um, a, a tool that is very useful as well. Yeah, then, then uh, especially when you starting memorizing the different type of models. So it helps you a lot. Yeah. yeah. And so this is the last thing. So the, the tune race ANOVA, instead of tune grid, there is a tune race ANOVA, which is a, a different procedure for scanning between uh, the, the best other parameters. And so you basically specify uh, this uh, in, instead of control grid, you have control race. Uh, but uh, the best way is, as I said, if we go forward to iterative search and then we do screening many models, there is a, an example that uses both. So you can uh, come on the same data and then you can compare. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much, Federica, for this one. It was. Thank you. I think it was technically challenging, like uh, to <laughs> present this kind, not not specifically, but like this kind of chapter is is much more like technical and like um, in the weeds stuff. Uh, so thank you so much. I really hope like your professional um, expertise and knowledge. So thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye, have, have a good day. Yes, bye. Thank you very much.